Okay, just a minute. Uh, next year is going to be a very exciting year for me. I'm not going to talk about that today, but this year has been the year that everybody keeps calling me Ricky Jibber. So just a minute. <laughs> I'm not Ricky Jibber. <laughs> yeah, but then everybody sees my fat face. Um, okay, I'm a programmer most of the time. And so it's nice to get the opportunity today to talk about something that's not at all technical. It's more about how you can improve websites through very simple actions. It's more about, it's, not, it's kind of design, it's usability, it's logic. It's using your own experience as a web user to improve the experience that your visitors have. Um, talk, my, one of my the things that I love to do, because I'm also a photographer, is to go to very beautiful places like this. So I spend a lot of time going up mountains and going to viewpoints like here on on that Le Mans to take lovely photos. Um, and so the particular focus I've got today is with a few, uh, a few tourist websites. Uh, when you're making a website, the first thing you need to do before you even start, and we're not talking technically, just in general terms, is you need to have priority. What is the priority of the website that you're going to be making? The first priority that you have is that you need your visitors, or you need to allow your visitors to get the information that they're looking for, or to sort of complete your task as quickly as possible. Everybody is stressed. Everybody has no time. Everybody's using their phones while you're sitting in front of the TV. You're traveling in a train. Get, the iPad, get, the, get your iPad on and, and do stuff online. Okay? That's the first and primary priority. That's it. That is, your, that is in fact the only priority when you're making a website. Because what else is a website for but to achieve that? To share information or to allow people to complete tasks. That's it. It's not difficult to work out what you need to do. The technology is different, so nobody's going to be using WordPress or using something else, and which plugins to use, and all the backup and all the technical problems. That's, that's kind of a, a tool that you're going to use to achieve those things, but that is your priority. It's a great fallacy that people come to your website because they like what it looks like. Nobody cares what your website looks like. They care how well that they can use it and how they can understand it. Website, and you're confused. It doesn't matter that it loads in half a second. It doesn't matter that you've got a slide on the front page. It doesn't matter that you've got a video. It doesn't matter that it works on your mobile phone. What matters is if you get that website, it's technically perfect and it's the fastest website you've ever seen. It doesn't matter if you can't use it, you can't work out how to use it because after a few seconds you'll be like, you know what, I'm just going to go and find another website that works more easily for me. When you're trying to achieve number one, think number four. Everybody here uses the internet aside from their day job. What annoys you when you go looking for information? If you're trying to find out timetables or you want to know what time the shop's open or you need to know how to get someone, what's the thing that gets in the way of doing that? What's the thing that every day you go, oh, that's so annoying? Cookie banners. Cookie banners. Pop ups. Nobody gives a shit about cookies. Nobody cares about privacy. That's a fallacy. You're obliged to do it, even more and more and more, but that doesn't mean that you need to have a banner here that's blocking you from doing stuff. I built a website for clients at the beginning of the year, and it looked really, really good. It was a really good design. It had lots of heavy, heavy videos, but it doesn't matter because their clients were sitting in offices wearing their suits and ties on a super fast internet connection, coming to look at what offerings they had. Too much word. Pardon? Too much word. No, too much, too much word. What happened was he went on the site, really well designed, beautiful typography, lovely gradients and colours and everything, and a cookie banner walking the entire header so you can click on that <laughs> The cookie banner on it says, this website uses cookies. By using our website, you're accepting that you're going to use those. And then next to it, there's a button that says, accept. What happens if you don't click on that? What happens if you click on little X or little on the button that says, no, I don't accept it? You go to the next page and you look in the, in the browser console, there are still cookies there. It wasn't done. It was a bad solution. Okay, but it's not about the technical side, that's not what I'm talking about today. It's, it gets in the way. So if you're thinking about designing a website, build, building a website, using a, a plugin or whatever, look at it and see if you went to that website, will it annoy you? Does it get in the way? Everybody thinks that the cookie banner is the solution. No, it's not. You just need to have somewhere on, your, on, on, the, on the page visible to every user that the cookies are being sent. If you don't agree to it, don't use my website. Be clear about what you're trying to communicate. But it doesn't mean that if you need to add a thing to your website for legal reasons, that it has to get in the way of everything else. <coughs> everybody, everybody hates pop-ups. Nobody wants to subscribe to a newsletter the first time you go to a website. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> if you go to the website and you read the article, you go, this is really good, and then on the right hand side there's a call to action that says subscribe to my newsletter, then you fill it out and you subscribe to it. That's great. But if you try, you try and force people to subscribe to the newsletter, all that will achieve is they go to another website. Okay. Um, examples of some websites. Um, four websites, three local, one not local. For reasons I'll explain when we get there. Um, I'm not a great fan of slides, so we're just going to switch straight into the browser now. And what I'm going to do is just look at these websites that I've got up here to say what works well on their website. What have they done? What have they solved correctly? And what could they improve? Um, the app here, the website, the tourism website, and the full screen website. Now, I'm not going to go to uh, let's have a technical approach. I'm just going to go as an idiot user. Sorry, idiot users. I'm one of them too. Okay, I search for the OBA, don't know where it is, don't know how to get there, click on the link. My browser is set to English. And I see that. Okay, what, who can tell me what's bad about that for number it's one? It's French and English. It's French and English, yeah. So I'm going to the website thinking, well, all these other websites that I go to, they, they automatically switch into English form. Or they're all in French. If they're in French, I can't understand it. Fine, I go somewhere else and look at another website. But you can't always translate every website that you make, that's not realistic. But here, you've got the trendy thing in Switzerland is a little bit of English on your website to make you look cool. Yeah. One thing that really bothers me about this website is that it's really difficult to find the switch for, uh, to another language and you have to search everywhere in the menu then you have to scroll all the way down yeah exactly okay time. so go where's the language switch on my page <laughs> in the footer yeah, yeah. in the footer scroll down open the menu is uh, not wide enough and you have things on the left okay 10 seconds you've lost your time <laughs> <laughs> you can't find it you said right the, the menu's too wide the menu's too wide that's a, that's a, that's a mistake on the website no, the, browser was wide, the browser was wider than the, bit, than the screen that I'm looking at. But I don't know that was so I didn't see that because it looked like it was a complete page. Okay, can you see it now? You can't switch language. Yeah, what does FR mean? Yeah, have you heard that? You know that as, a, as somebody that's involved in the internet industry. My mum would know that. What does that mean? French? You say FR, I don't know what it means. Done. Okay, so, but I can, I can click and I can switch to English. Now, word, not just WordPress, but any, any decent CMS allows that to happen automatically when you're on the website. It automatically says, this browser is English, so I'll show you the English page. It's not difficult, you don't have to program it, you just do it, it works. So there's no reason here why they couldn't have done that, considering the amount of visitors that they're likely to receive on the website, it makes sense. Okay, so I know, I've heard, I've heard the name Verbier, it's all over the, in, in the press in, in Britain. It's a cool place to go, skiing and everything. Um, this isn't obviously the right season for skiing, but I want to know about skiing for the coming season. How do I get, where is this, what's the point you go? Okay. So, here on the left hand side, very, very small, there's a little button, not even red, it's sort of half red, that says winter. So we're going to this page. And now I'm on the page. Okay, I can go and get drunk, that's a good sign. So that this page here, you know, this it's not bad, but it's it's kind of the, the problem with I think the bootstrap started this idea originally. With their jumbo trunk. Is that that's the screen that they think is all the important information on it. The first thing you see when you scroll. Now everybody scrolls. There are lots and lots of reviews and reports and everything that people have analyzed this, they've done A B testing and all this kind of stuff. And the simple thing is, when somebody goes onto that website, because every single website has that kind of idea, now everybody knows you have to scroll down. But just by one action scrolling down, that's one action I wouldn't need to do if I could see here a little bit more information rather than this great big image. I know I want to go skiing, and I know I'm thinking about going to Virgin, so I don't need a massive photograph of somebody skiing. I know that this is doable. Most people will be looking for accommodation, they want to know prices and all this kind of stuff. Ticket prices is pretty good, well placed that's in the middle. Again, it's with that sort of that transparency effect. It looks okay, it looks quite modern and stuff, but it just means it's a little bit more difficult to find. When I click on it, 
<laughs> that was a short one. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, oh, the winter's going to be getting warmer and colder, not suddenly that it's here in t shirts on the ski. <laughs> okay, so we'll go back to the previous page. And we'll go down and see what there are. Get to know the resort better. Ski area. I want to know about ski. Now, I haven't prepared this, I haven't looked at this website before. I've just looked at it briefly, but once before. So I'm, but I'm not being very critical, I'm not saying this is rubbish, this website, I'm just, just as an average website from, for a tourist place in Switzerland. It's very, very slow. I'm on the Wi Fi, this isn't even over a mobile phone network. It's taking a good 10, 15 seconds to load. And again, I've got a great big picture of somebody skiing. Thanks for that. Anybody here, hands up, who goes mountain biking in winter? Good luck. <laughs> Once we get past the obvious kind of content problems, which isn't isn't technical really, it's something that you, you, you must forget what people are actually looking for. Does that actually make sense? What would make more sense here is to optimize this area and make the priority the winter, because that's what you're looking for, but then have something on maybe on, on the side of the page that says, okay, by the way, there are other seasons. We don't just open the winter, we are still here in the summer and in the spring as well. So all this information is further down here. So, so far, I've clicked three times. I'm impressed. Oh, this looks nice here. Yeah, that's good. Park card. I don't know what that is. Web TV. Maybe. Okay. Special offers. Any sign of any special offers here? No. This was under our specials. You just paid for four dollars. No, I'm being rude. That's not true. Um, but I'm going down here. Okay. Let's have a look at the club card. Assuming that's some sort of discount card. Okay, again, this great big image telling me the people to be there. Yeah, okay, that's now the fourth time you've told me. Thanks for that. Register online. So when I look at that without clicking, we've got this banner here. I'm on the English website. Why is it in French? Um, now, when I look at that, obviously, again, as I just said, we can scroll down. We can find out more information by scrolling down. But why should I have to scroll down? There's plenty of space there on the screen to show me the prices. What is that? What is the cost? Best price guarantee. Okay, good. So I'm roughly in the right area. Different prices. I can choose what I want to go look at, what I can go and see. Uh, direct access to the That, for me, is one of the first things you should see. Telling me, what should I buy? And why, what makes it interesting for me? Okay, that should be right at the top of the page. So now I'm going to click on the logo, because I've got used to the idea that the logo is the home page. Uh, the logo is the home page. The home page problem. And what you suddenly notice is you're not even on the Fovier website anymore. You're on a different website. So that is very, very confusing for people. And here again, you've got um, another navigational problem here. Firstly, you've got red on blue, which is incredibly bad. You've got the zero is almost invisible to my old middle-aged eyes. How many hands up who hear German-speaking Swiss people who like the fact that you're using the German flag to indicate the German, to indicate your language? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> any, any, Swiss, any French Swiss here would like the fact that there's a French uh, flag of France that you used to identify you? This, I, this Irishman isn't so happy either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing again. It's all these kind of feedback. One thing, if, you, if you said one tip away from stage, so ever, ever, ever use a flag to denote language. Flags have got nothing to do with language. Okay, so we'll use a back. we we'll use a good old fashioned back button and go back to the main website. Okay, so we'll try a different approach. We'll go back to the home page by clicking on the logo. Hopefully we get to the right place this time. Yes, we do. Results in useful information. Wow. <laughs> so much useful information. I must sit down. I must sit down and read all of that immediately. Okay. Um, where is there, yeah? Destination. Destination. What? Right hand corner. Very well hidden. Okay. Again, confusing. That's why is it suddenly going to sign? Why is it suddenly going to sign? Static HTML file. Not bad for the performance. The hearing. Lots of text. Yeah, more. Yeah, okay. The snow mountains. Good. Hey, okay, video. Great. Okay. Can I get my train? Do I have to fly? Do I have to get, have to get a bike out? I mean, this is all quite difficult. 
It's all quite difficult to find out this information. To find out the basic information, I would say, not on this website, but on another website in, in, in uh, German speaking Switzerland. I, did, I ran a quick test, I know where the place is, and to find out how to get there by public transport took me 25 minutes. <laughs> and I've been using the internet as a programmatic and concept for 23 years. And it took me nearly half an hour to find out how to get to this place. Okay? Imagine that you've never even heard of Switzerland and you just think old people say it's nice, so I want to go and have a look at it. Have you got the patience to try and really say, you know, half an hour, it's going to take half an hour just to find out where this place even is? <laughs> Icons are not a bad idea because it means that you've got immediate links. So once you've been to the website a couple of times, they're pretty useful. These icons actually make sense. You can properly work out what they are. Anybody want to have a guess at those icons at the top corner? What they are? Do you, do you make websites? Yes. Okay. So that's a train icon. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> or a bus. Um, so why does it show me a very big place where I'll hold the And don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing your opinion because you just said it off the top of your head what that is. For me, when I look at that, it's a bus. So when I click on it, I expect to see something about buses. I don't see buses, I see where the other lines are. Live cam? Yes. Okay. okay. Also, this is not a pleasant name, Have you noticed that it gets in the way every single time you want to use a page? Mm. Really annoying. You have to be a little bit optimistic because it's a kind of French or Swiss romantic way of expression. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to use know that the pictures are great? <clears throat> it's beautiful. That's, that's really yeah, beautiful that's thing. it. I mean, Swiss themselves itself. You don't, have to, you don't have to have a reason to come, you don't have to have a reason to spend twice or three times as much as come here as to go to France, which is just as beautiful. Go to Annecy, just as beautiful as France, and it costs you a lot less if you're visiting from abroad. Uh, oh, scroll effect. This, this, is, this is like walking through a minefield, this website. Every time I move the mouse, something else oh, pops up, what's this? Now you're laughing. But if you were to use it for this website, it would be so annoying. It's annoying me, and I've, I've, and I've, I've kind of looked at this website a little bit, so I'm used to it. But even though I'm used to it, every single time I go anywhere near that menu, it says, here's 40 options of each stuff you want to look at next. I don't want 40 options, I just want to know what time the bus is on. Okay? Just wait. You've got a webcam here, on the page, and it's telling me what time is. Thanks, but it's telling me time at the top of the dot, the top of it as well. What's the point? It's helpful to know what, how, how, how accurate that picture is. Because I can't count the amount of times I've gone to a webcam and looked at it in the winter and seen a picture like from the autumn and go, oh, there's not much snow up there. The weather report says it's minus 25 degrees up there at the moment. <laughs> okay, so enough shooting for dynamic flames. Um, the next one, Golden Pass. Who knows the Golden Pass? Nobody? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. yes, or you all sleep? No? Yes. Okay, a few people in the Golden Pass. I've heard that the Golden Pass is a thing to do in Switzerland, but I have to go and do that. <coughs> For those people who don't know what the Golden Pass is, any idea what the Golden Pass is without reading any details on that, on that thing? But just by looking at that page? Now you see it because you've got the second page, the second slide, not the first, the second, suddenly showing you a nice golden train. In Montreal. And all this information is whizzing past the screen, it's staying for a few seconds or whatever. And I'm looking at that going, oh, that looks nice. What's that going to Oh. <laughs> Where did that go? Oh, I don't know. I'll go back to another bit again. Okay, what's the oh, that's that got to do with trains? Now, I'm not an idiot, I realise that most people will work out, okay, that's one of the places you can go to with the train. But is it though? Go to lines. <coughs> Can anybody else see on that map where that destination is? Because I can't. Now I can. It's one of my patients you have to wait to get this website, and then suddenly goes, that's where you have to come. Okay. So again, it's a bit, it's a bit confusing. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. Now, let's assume you don't want to improve that word, you want to use existing stuff, you want to have a nice slide with a nice big picture, that's fine, that's no problem at all. But just think next time you do it, think that you're using this website looking at it on screen that size, and you're trying to read the text, and all of a sudden it goes. <laughs> think about it if you can't do an overlay effect, if you can't fade in and fade out. Because it's usually fine on a little laptop or on your phone, which, as we've heard earlier today, more than 50% of people in sorts of user phones more often than not. But if you're using a slightly bigger screen, especially if you're looking at a map or if you're looking at a video that's constantly relooping, if that thing suddenly shifts across your IMAX screen in, what, three to 600 milliseconds, that's going to hurt your eyes, especially if it keeps doing it, and especially if there's no way of stopping it. So if you're going to use one of these, think about princess stop, pause, is there a way of doing this? the overlay effect to actually make it swap, swap, swap in and out? Okay. So, Apart from that, this website's not, not bad at all. I would say it needs to say a little bit more what is a golden pass. Um, when you scroll down, you've got all, this lovely great, all these lovely great graphics. It tells you what they are. Chocolate trade, oh yeah, chocolate. Um, ah, where's my chocolate? Give me chocolate. I can't. You can't click on it. You've got to go somewhere else to search for it. So that's a bit of a shame that it's not linked here. Okay? Viewer offers. Now for me, that, I think that's a little bit more important than that. Because that's just one destination that you could go to, but I'm travelling from Interlaken by train to come to Montreux. So that doesn't really interest me that one. You get a lot more tourists that come across country to, on the train than want to go up to that place. Because my French is not good, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Okay, so down here I've got these offers. That I think should be a little bit higher up. Again, why is it in French when I'm on the English website? If you're going to have a multilingual website, translate all of it. Don't translate half of it because it's just not. Oh, look, here's that slider again, telling me about another place. Passenger gallery. Anybody got any opinions on that? Ooh. Is it 1996? <laughs> <laughs> what you've got here is a nice attempt to actually show you how nice it is. Oh, there's a train here. Um, but you're looking, at, you're looking at a big gallery of images which are showing how nice it is. It's very nice that they're using their, their, their customers' pictures. A lot of the hotel websites do that. I'm showing sure you know we're being open. We're not just showing our professionally done photos. We're showing real photos. Other people are taking. But if you've got all that, you don't need a background image. You really don't. It's just confusing because it's, I mean, that there is just, as a photographer, that's just like, that's nice. And that's chopped off. It's okay. But the fact that there's all this green stuff going on in the middle is just really, really confusing. If you were to turn that We've gone off that website with um, perhaps your, uh, your eyesight's not that good, or you've got problems with recognising different colours, you've got no chance of looking at that at all. So just think about what, type, what different types of people are going to be visiting the site and perhaps not think, okay, we're going to show how nice it is by putting a really beautiful picture and then covering it with stuff so you can't see it. It's a waste of time. Not only on top of, on top of that also, we'll open up quickly the, the network console. Images, caching is off. Don't worry about the JavaScript errors or something else altogether. Okay, that's so that page is 10 megabytes. <laughs> okay, now most websites these days that have this kind of very heavy image content because they want to uh, get people to come and visit them are mainly between 10 and 20 megabytes, the ones that I've measured. There's no point. You've got two techniques. One, don't have so many pictures on the front page. Put them on a nice gallery page. Put them on a page which is more appropriate to this location, to this restaurant or mountain station. Lazy open. So the first one's there. You've got your page up. It's maybe 500 kilobytes. Done. Half a second. Less than half a second if you've got a good caching system. And then when it, maybe a few seconds before it's ready to go to the next slide, then load the picture. And when the image is loaded, then change the slide. So that means you've got a massive. Uh, Performance improvement. We'll go on to another page quickly. Uh, deals. Again, there's not so much on that page. Main tool, sorry, too quick. If I look at this, you've got deals, you can interact with it, that's all fine. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 18, 19 teasers. We call them teasers because it's supposed to be a little light and it's going to be something else, but that's why they're off on one page. See how heavy that page is? Ten and a half megabytes of images. Just images. Entire page. Not 
much more, so that's not so bad. Um, now let's try full time slowdown. So I say we're on a, on a 3G network or a slow, uh, you know, wobbly 4G network. Seven seconds, that's surprisingly not bad. But that's something you need to pay, for, pay attention to. Now, if you're not developing, if you're making a design or if you're making um, content for this page, that's something you need to perhaps have a quick look at as a console. Look at how it's opening your browser, but that's, you get that in Chrome, you get that in Firefox, just see what the effect is and how long it takes. Anything that's been out here, today, yeah, anything more than one or two seconds is too long. So you need to think about optimizing it. The client will go, oh, all these pictures, all this information, pack it all into one page. That means that the average slide width so will only see about 10%, probably 10 to 10 percent of everything on the page. So it's just too much information. Okay, um, again, language switch. They use the flag, but we can't play like that. What's the point? Perhaps they show it in Switzerland, maybe? Language, oh, okay. Shine, shine my simplifié. Isn't that French? <laughs> anyone here speak, anyone speak Chinese? Should that not be Chinese maybe? Okay. Right, so just as an example now. That's um, I'll just like to iterate before I go on to the next bit. This is not a, this is not a design. This is a website in German speaking Switzerland, near where I live. That's their website as it was about a year and a half ago. That's the website as it was two or three days ago. So not much has changed. At the top, the important things at the top, so it's okay. The design, again, you don't need that background image. What's the point in showing 2% of the glacier? Back then, their idea was all about the summer season, showing how beautiful it is, that's all fine, no problem, you can see that. So some information about a new cable car system that uh, the people in that region are thinking it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And it would be cool. Not important to most visitors. Go off this page, still the same thing, summer season, and now they're proud of their new cable car. Just hand on the roof off. Hopefully not for um, Now, again, here, when I go onto this website, I want to find out, this is just a screenshot, by the way, I'm not, um, I want to find out information about tickets. Fine, I can do that. I want to buy a voucher as a gift or something. Fine, I can work out about what's going on in the winter and find out how much it costs and all this kind of thing. So, from that point of view, this, the front page is very well organized so that you can then click again. But what would make more sense is surely if you go to that page and you can see the information you want without doing anything, that's better, isn't it? It saves you a click, saves you those two or three seconds again, you have to wait. Who's got two or three seconds to wait in this life? That's not a redesign, it's just move stuff around from the website and put it there so that when I go to the home page, I've got all the information it impresses me, oh, that's nice, it's a really lovely view, apart from the master plan. That's a really lovely view. Um, so yes, I definitely want to go there. Where can I go there at the moment? Um, the last, yeah, can we go? The last cable calls are at quarter to six, is it? Uh, it's quarter to six this evening, so maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. It also shows me that there are two cable calls, one from each side of that ridge. I want to go hiking today, yeah. The two cars are open, when I click on the link, then I can see more information about parking cars. Events that are coming up, which are going to say again, oh, this is very family friendly, that's really cool, I can click here and find out more information. There's two there's upcoming events, which again says come and visit, come and visit. Navigation, again, at the back. I can't remember now off the top of my head if that's a drop down menu or, or if that's the entire menu, but it's quite limited. Although, we're just moving stuff around. You can pack quite a lot of space into that small area if you do it properly. Think about it. If you wanted to go there, what would you want to know before you knew about anything else? If you want to go to Phillips, for example, what's the first thing you want to find out? Is there anything special going on? Can I go on the boat, on the lake? What's the weather like? And look, all of these most important things are up in the top corner in the navigation. Now these drop-down menus are very useful for people who like designing menus. That's about the only people that have them. Most people it's just too much information. They want something simple, tickets, click, button, there's a paper with tickets and information on it. Order a ticket, You use a personal web app, you can do all the one views so that you don't even have to leave the page to order your ticket. The entire process runs on one page. 
Yeah? And also, if I look at that page, somebody says, oh, you must look at Mannequin. Why? Yeah, it looks nice, but what about it? You don't just need a picture. You need that. You need a bit of text to explain why. What is it? Where is it? How do I get there? And that is literally two, what, three sentences which says, what is it? Where is it? And how can I get there? You try and do that with icons and then drop down menu and a lovely, very big map. You just confuse people more. You just use a text. There's no reason not to use text, but that's the right text. Okay. And again, the thing I said about the live count is here. Here, without even doing anything, I can see, oh, it's a bit grey today, I don't need really more update today, I'll leave it for another day. And I can also see lots of it today at 10.45. Now that's the screen on my laptop, I don't have to touch anything, I can see everything I want in my view. And because there's only half a dozen very, very small thumbnail images on one slightly larger image, the total size of that page is probably about 120 kilobytes, if you optimize your images. So that's between 10 and 50 times smaller than an average person. <coughs> But you said what exactly what you need to do. Okay, mobile version, I've run out of time pretty much, I think, so that's just kind of the same idea. Mobile, it's the same website, but through because of the design, the structure is different. If I'm on my phone, I've got perhaps, I want to use it even quicker, I want to know exactly what's going on. Quickly uh, expand and close uh, information, direct link to the navigation to the other information I need. So, that's the, kind of, that's the main thing. Give the people what they're looking for now. Um, don't wait 10 seconds, give them what they want now, and then if they need to want no more information, as few clicks as possible. If people have to click more than twice to go and find other information, it's not a good website. It doesn't matter how beautiful it is, it's not working out as intended to be. That's all for that topic. Um, just a quick close, thank you very much. Um, WordPress community is very, very strong in and I'm very excited to see how many people are on here today. Um, there's all these exciting conversations and discussions going on. We have those kind of things all the time in Slack, WPCH or Slack.com. In English, you can talk in English, German, French, Italian, right or online, whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Whoever understands it, will give you an answer. So go by, sign up with your WordPress or all email address, and if you don't know how that works, then go to WPBurn, the Burn Meetup website, slash community to find out how to sign up with your email address. Okay. Any questions? No. Thank you for the presentation, I really liked it. I would like to come back to the first website we saw together. I think we all agree that you're always a struggle to find the menu for the languages. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that the flags were a bad idea, yeah. uh, the drop down is a bad idea. In your opinion, what is the best thing? From a user point of view, and it's a website that is out of Deutsch for a few parts. Everybody who speaks German knows what that means. You don't have to try and work out what does DE mean? What's that flag? Is that mm -hmm. look at the German website? No. Write in the write in text. Or at least as a bare minimum, if you haven't got much space, then write Deutsch, Francais, whatever. Just write it properly. Don't, there's no need to abbreviate. You don't need to abbreviate. Thank okay. you. Would you have any best practices around the use of menus on on well on sites? I'm going to keep this very short because I have a very strong opinion on this. <laughs> Most websites don't need menus. Now that sounds quite strange, but that if I was if I'm considering a new website for something like a place like this, I don't think that this website needs more than eight to ten pages in the pages. If you've got a great big drop down like we saw on the Verbio website, it's too much. Who's going to look through that many? Nobody. We can see, I can see the work, I can see the website with the, with the designer and with the client. The client had the, the final word. And their drop down menu has 67 menu entries in it. Who's going to read that? Nobody. If you've got something here which you come on the front page and you say, oh, I want to go hiking, spectacular hiking, click. Here's a pulse, here's a little map, here's a PDF you can download. You don't need a menu for that, you just click on the teaser. And there's, a, and there's a website on it, if you want to force your clients to go in a certain, oh, sorry, visitors in a certain direction, then you can do that by placing on other pages very targeted things like that. So you can say, okay, on a hiking path, then on the side here, I've got a, in the side path, I've got a little teaser saying, here's how I can buy a ticket to go hiking. 
is a special offer for hiking. So you can choose in terms of content what you put on your pages without having an automatic menu, which is the same on every, on every single page. All you need is so that if the, if the user spends 10 15 minutes on your website and gets a bit lost, they know how to get back to the start. And that's enough usually to just put a button which says home or site map or something like that. These great, great drop down menus you used to be on our own pages. We used to call them site map pages. Nobody uses them anymore. Everybody wants to sign up on every single page. Nobody uses those. Everybody's confused about those. I'm really quite convinced of that fact. So, the smaller the menu, the better. Is my best practice. Honestly. Thank you. Thank you. You are waiting for us. Thank you. Thank you.